Hi and welcome to a very quick demonstration of the HP UBA or User Behavior Analytics uh, product that's now currently available. Uh, today I'll be doing a very simple uh, and quick demonstration based around what we call behavior anomaly uh, using a peer-based detection system. So uh, we'll just go ahead and quickly log in to the interface and we are there. Just got to quickly adjust the date. Uh, because we've got some data in here, let's just have a look at uh, the data to, to what we've already got stored in the system to understand uh, what's actually going on with the user and identity information behind that. The, the key thing to note here is that this is an identity-based system. So we're looking at uh, usernames and activity and then linking that back to the actual identity or the person behind what's actually going on uh, with the activity that we've seen. Now, we can see there's a, a nice little chart here, but more importantly, uh, we've, we've got what we call a risk-based system. So we can see that there are a number of, uh, in this case we can see the, the, the people, the individuals that are here, we can see some unique identifiers with regards to the employee ID uh, and more importantly we can start to see some identity information for these particular individuals. So we can see the departments that are in, divisions, titles, job codes, employee ID, managers, where relevant and so on. And in fact, actually, we can see where the color is slightly different. Uh, we can see that these particular individuals uh, are inactive users. So we shouldn't actually be seeing these uh, uh, as activity at all. But what we're actually seeing is some risk scoring here. So we're, we're seeing a number of things that are, are, are causing a risk score to be created and then adding that together to come up with this higher level of score here. So so this particular user here, this this Harry Ogwa, uh, represents a very high risk because he's got a very high uh, risk score aspect here. Uh, but that's just a high level aspect from that point of view. We can see some information there. We can see all the, the relevant data. So that's great. Uh, what we can also do is you know, let's have a look at uh, an overall uh, view of the data across uh, this particular period of time. Let's just adjust this so we can see some uh, wider spread of uh, data in this. Apply that and we see the charts appear, which is fantastic. So we can see that there's a, a, an interval there and we can see there's a number of uh, policies have been violated, some checks that we've defined that have, uh, have been breached and some overall threats in this case by resource. Uh, and then we can actually scroll down to get to the, the behavior and peer-based uh, violations that have occurred as well. So we can see in this particular case there's a number of, uh, again, this Harry Ogwa user that's causing the, the scoring there, but he's using particular resources. In this case, it's uh, Windows uh, host names and a particular account. And then that you can see there's some misuse behavior activity here as well. Uh, so that's all really quite useful and, and, and relevant information to look at. But what do we mean by uh, misuse activity and in this particular case baseline behavior and so on? So let me just dig into, in this particular one case, I'm going to dig into the to a particular server here that we've got some data. Now we can see that there's a, a, in this particular case, the naming construct shows that it's an Active Directory domain controller. It's a Windows type and we can see some other information here. More importantly, we've done a number amount of, uh, of, of attributing users and user accounts to particular activity on that. So we can see some of the information there and as needed we may want to reset that on a, a per individual server basis so we can do that. Uh, but we can also set some other aspects here but let me just click into the behavior profile for a second and actually look at the data that's, uh, that's being used for this particular machine. Now we can see that this, this chart here is spread across a very wide area here uh, and we can see that there is a baseline defined, we can see the baseline, we can see the information and so on. So we've got a good spread of data that we're calculating this for. But it's not just a single baseline, we're, we're defining the baseline but we've got what we call clusters within that as well. So we can see that there's two separate lines here with regards to overall activity so we can understand that there's, there's one set of activity here but after uh, this particular time period we can see the activity changes so we can now define some of this activity of event volumes different types of events and so on this baseline aspect is done on every single server every single username every single uh, identity and so on so we're baselining everything as it's occurring uh, and understanding what that baseline is and understanding what the clusters are so we can see any changes or anomalies with regards to that as well so that's really useful and we can we can see some of the data as part of that so that's good. So jumping back to our security dashboard for a second. Uh, so let's just jump back to my security dashboard. And then from within that, I'll just adjust it for my uh, custom dates. We've got a nice 
a flash of data in there so that's great uh, so we can see the information there uh, as part of this process we also want to see some of the peer based activity so understand uh, what's actually going on with some of the activity and, and so on so uh, we can see some information there uh, and that's actually very useful uh, but what actually I want to start looking at some of the peer based activities here so I just clicked on the activity and we can see that there's been a couple of trigger aspects with regards to this so we can see that there's a, an Anastasia Morgan and a, a Colin Weir that's, that's caused some activity here um, so we can see there's misuse suspicious process peer based so what does that mean and it's it's got a particular score now of course the scoring uh, attributes upwards with regards to other activities and other things that are occurring so there's there's a set of other activities that are increasing the scoring as well and it's contributing to the to the scoring mechanism uh, i won't go into massive detail but you can see that it's scored according to the risk factors and the criticality that's involved here but if i just increase that and, and view the data underneath we can see that there's uh, there's been some particular uh, events occurring here uh, it actually we can actually click on the violations and individual so we can see the event this is a, a security uh, 593 event uh, we can actually scroll across and see some further information we can see the the, uh, the actual program that's closed we can see the username uh, and, and more importantly that username there's no reference to the person with regards to this as uh, particular event what it's the system is doing is it's uh, doing the lookup attributing this particular username doing the lookup backwards to the actual person that's behind this uh, particular event itself now if I should just scroll backwards here I can actually increase that and it actually displays the the arc site categorization for me to understand that as well so in this particular case it's nice and easy to understand but it might be from a system that I don't understand so I'm getting that categorization information in there as well to understand what the event is uh, specifically so that's really quite useful and so on but let me just increase that again what does this mean what are we doing here with this this peer-based uh, threat indicator so uh, this this individual Anastasia is a member of uh, three different peer groups uh, based on her department in this case uh, client development group based on her title associate client relations and also uh, based on her manager uh, as a particular person here so within those groups uh, this particular event only occurred once out of eight particular uh, individuals within that group within that particular peer only once within that particular group that has three separate members and then finally as a manager when there's only two other people that have occurred so we're doing some calculations there calculating the risk value accordingly so where the where the grouping is small uh, it's scoring accordingly where the grouping is larger and therefore it's rarer we're scoring it accordingly as well so what we're seeing is that this particular event uh, we don't see it appearing in any other peer group. We're doing that analysis automatically. We're understanding that this event, uh, in general, you would see as activity within groups of activity across other things you're doing, your peers, your other uh, other groups, very similar roles, very similar jobs, locations, uh, jobs, roles, and tasks. Uh, in this particular case, nobody else is using these particular events. So that becomes a suspicious-based activity, which is then scoring accordingly, which then increases the overall risk score for this particular individual scoring against uh, some other activity as well so you can start to see that we can build up a nice view of what's going on now this is not based on a rule other than looking for some unusual activity based on the groupings of the peers of similar sets of activity it doesn't understand what that particular event means uh, and therefore it could be uh, unusual uh, unseen uh, apt virus or malware that we've never seen before what we're doing is seeing that this particular event has not been seen uh, before and therefore it makes it unique or un uh, unusual based on the baseline uh, of activity that we're seeing on other users. So that's, that's useful, it's, it's, it's relevant data and we can start to build out and flesh out some of this in information. But let's just dig into this particular user for a second. So we can actually just click on the employer ID here and we can see the information. So this has come from, uh, in this particular case, it's come from Active Directory, but this would be from your, your identity management system. So we can see the information, uh, extended attributes against this particular user, that they're full-time, regular employment, and so on. Uh, we're also uh, tracking a record and seeing any changes to that. So it's, it could have one port, one, one uh, baseline import and then have changes to that and show that as things occur on that so we can see the employment history we can also see that they're scheduled for a termination as well uh, we can also see a change history in this particular case we can see that they actually moved location at a certain time as well so we can see as the data is changing we can also even go down to the individual behavior profile uh, for this so we can actually look at the sets of activity uh, that we've seen 
with regards to this particular user and we can see some of the events as they have occurred. So just as we were doing all of the uh, profiling based on the server as we saw before with a baseline and, the, and a particular uh, that we've defined with the clusters within that, we can also in, in also do that broken down by uh, the actual individual username and the identity as well uh, that's occurring too. So it then becomes quite a, a, an effective and easy way to uh, to understand and, and baseline and, and profile the particular sets of activity. So that's all really quite useful but now we, we suspect that some things that we need to do an investigation on. So we actually have the capability of going into what we call the investigation workbench. So now we can start to look at this data uh, and start to pivot around and understand what's going on. So we've actually done an investigation in this case it's on Anastasia Morgan uh, on her title and, and uh, particular groups. So we can actually start looking at some of this data as well. So we can say well what has she accessed? So we can just quickly do that investigation. Well, is, she's accessed this particular machine uh, and this particular resource. In this particular case, it's a, a server name. We could also then dig, dig into what particular accounts has she used uh, across that particular time. So in this case, we know that she's used this particular account. This is the data that we have in our demo, demo system here. But of course, if they were using multiple usernames and multiple systems, we could also dig into that data, uh, data accordingly. And then ultimately, we can actually see what policies that she's violated as well or she's triggered within the system. So we know that there's been some sort of unusual process. We know that she's actually a, a terminated employee or upcoming to termination hence uh, within 30 days and that's what's causing the, 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 the scoring factor accordingly. But of course this data actually allows me to to view some of this data uh, and understand and pivot around it so I can look at uh, and understand addresses and so on. So I can actually start digging into some of this data uh, and looking at what, what actually is going on uh, across the various systems uh, as we're seeing. So if I actually just jump back to the individual user there, uh, I can actually go into the groups and then I can go into who's in those particular groups. Uh, and then, for example, I'm suspicious of another user here. I can then start digging into that particular group accordingly uh, and then look at the accounts that they're using and so on. So now we can see that this individual user is using multiple accounts and so on. So ultimately we might conclude that it was just uh, an anomalous activity uh, and it's not a security threat or anything like that. So we can actually go back in and we can whitelist uh, some of this activity or carry out some other actions accordingly. Uh, but overall we can see that we're scoring, we're doing this risk analysis, we're using peer-based uh, process to understand what that scoring is and then giving you a, a risk-based view of the identities and the individuals behind the threats that are occurring. Well, that's a very, very quick run through on this particular demonstration. I thank you very much for your time and uh, that is the end of this demonstration. Thank you.